Welcome. Thank you for joining us uh, today. May you know God's presence in the power of the Holy Spirit and the love of the Lord Jesus as we worship together with song, prayer and Bible readings. We'll also be looking to hear what God is saying to each of us through his word. My prayer is that you'll all hear his voice and experience his presence in a very real way. Right now, be blessed. Hi, and thanks for joining us today. I hope you've had a good week, whatever it has involved. I've managed to spend some time in my garden. Now I'm no Monty Don, but like lots of people, I've spent more time in the garden this year than ever before. And I'm very grateful to have that garden. I've not really been into growing fruit and veg before this year, but this year I've managed to grow courgettes, carrots, beetroot, garlic, various herbs, black currants and rhubarb. And I've planted raspberries and strawberries in the hope that they'll bear fruit next year. And this week, I planned to plant some spring flowering bulbs. I bought quite a lot though, and it took me several hours to get them all planted through what's left of the grass. I hope that when this Annus horribilis is over, that 2021 will be better. And when spring comes, my garden will burst into colour. This morning, Andy will be continuing our series on women of faith. And today we're looking at Lois and Eunice. for it. 
body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me Jesus yours is the victory oh. hallelujah Our readings are taken from Acts chapter 16 and 2 Timothy chapters 1 and chapter 3 using the ESV. Acts 16 verses 1 to 5 Paul came also to Derbe and to Lystra. A disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. He was well spoken of by the brothers at Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted Timothy to accompany him, and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those places, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they went on their way through the cities, they delivered to them for observance the decisions that had been reached by the apostles and the elders who were in Jerusalem. So the churches were strengthened in the faith, and they increased in numbers daily. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1-7 to seven. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, according to the promise of the life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, Grace, mercy and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors, with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see you, that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now, I am sure, dwells in you as well. For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. And 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 14 to 17. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learnt it, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, 
for correction and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be competent, equipped for every good work. Timothy was clearly someone special, a young man with great ability and heaps of potential, someone who could be trusted with challenging tasks, someone who had the grit to see them through. Talent spotted by the Apostle Paul in the Asia Minor city of Lystra on his second missionary journey Timothy quickly became the Apostle's indispensable right-hand man, an adopted son even, with two New Testament epistles addressed personally to him. Second Timothy starts with these words, To Timothy, my beloved child. The church in Ephesus was blessed with his leadership and pastoral heart, but none of this might have happened Uh, were it not for two special women in Timothy's life, his grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice. God's work in the lives of these two great women of faith is what kickstarts all the possibility and blessing that is Timothy. You know, so often we're drawn to the personalities and lives of spiritual leaders, but today we're going to look behind the scenes. Timothy's spiritual journey and much of his potential was due to the faithfulness of his mother and his grandmother. Uh, Their example as great women of faith points us in turn to a better understanding of how faith in Jesus can be passed down through uh, the generations. And that is what we want to see, isn't it? Uh, One generation after another understanding the message of Jesus Um, owning it for themselves and living it out through all of life. We all want to leave something of value for coming generations. Uh, We want them to value who we are. We want them to succeed. We want to see them become secure in all of life. But the best, the very best possible thing that we can leave with them is faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only hope uh, for the future in restoring this broken world. He's the only saviour who can save us from the sins that threaten our very existence. He's the only king who can forgive anything, cancelling every debt uh, on the cross and granting us uh, new beginnings in him. He's the only life that is unending, having defeated death in the tomb. And in his life, we find our own true lives. There's no question about it. This is the very best thing that we can pass on to the next generation. But how do we do that? And how do we do it effectively? And how do we pass on faith through the generations. Uh, These two uh, women in Timothy's life are going to give us uh, some key tips. First, as the Apostle Paul notes in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 5, uh, Lois and Eunice were noted for their sincere faith. There was nothing half-hearted about their Christian faith. It wasn't a lukewarm, just-in-case kind of faith. It wasn't something that they identified loosely with. It wasn't a veneer or an occasional overlay in their lives. Theirs was a sincere faith. It was open and genuine. It was wholehearted. What you saw was what you got. Dallas Willard points out that the goal of Christian discipleship is that both the inner and outer parts of life are to be completely shaped by the message of Jesus. Uh, When we believe absorbing Jesus' teaching and allowing the Holy Spirit to remolder our lives in his image, there's no need 
for sin or shame, bitterness or unforgiveness to fester away in the dark corners of our lives. Sincere faith is faith that understands what it means to be truly forgiven, what it means to know that we have a future beyond anything we see and what it means to be a true person of of integrity. Children are very sensitive to any whiff of hypocrisy, aren't they? They don't just share the good times with us. They see all of our lives, warts and all. They see how we handle stress, how we handle conflict, how we manage our relationships. And they don't just look at these things, they learn from them. People of sincere faith like Lois and Eunice, perhaps you and me, allow faith to shape all their lives. And like Timothy, when children see sincere faith worked out in the everyday lives of those that they love, they want it for themselves. Now, it hadn't always been like this for these women. Although Jewish, uh, Eunice had married a Gentile Greek, an act that was forbidden by her birth religion. Clearly, there'd been a time for her when love and life had overruled faith. And we don't know how damaging that had been uh, in the relationship that she had with her mother, Lois. But somehow the message of Jesus had broken through. First, it seems, into the life of Lois. And we don't know how long Lois had to go it alone, praying for her daughter and her daughter's family before Eunice too came to sincere faith in Jesus. Such faith is the gift of God. We can't make it happen ourselves. We can accept it from him and allow the spirit to continue working out that gift in our own lives day by day. So Lois and Eunice teach us that sincere faith is what passes on faith through the generations. Do you have faith like this? Or do you perhaps need to receive that gift from God today? The second tip for passing faith on through the generations that these two women give us is this, a commitment to sharing uh, the sacred writings. That's what they called what we now know as the Bible, sacred writings, God's words to humanity gathered together and written down so that we can read them, learn them, study them, know them, implement them in our lives. In uh, 2 Timothy 3, 14 and 15, the Apostle Paul urges Timothy, but as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you have learned it and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. You see, this is not just another book, some great work of literature. This, this is God's word. These are sacred writings, words to be revered and honoured, meditated and prayed through. And God speaks today through these words by his spirit. These are the words of life. For they point us to the word of life, to Jesus. And that's why it's so important to be acquainted with these words, to know them, to follow where they lead, to become wise to salvation by faith in Christ Jesus. And that's why the Bible is at the heart of all we do. My only goal each week in sharing with you is to help you see what God is saying to you through this book. Everything that we need to know for life and faith is written here. It's a manual for life. It's a guide for getting the most out of it. It's a map for the journey and it's a vision of the future. 
This is where we learn who God is, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So these are the words that we pass on to each generation. These are the words of faith. And that's what uh, Grandma Lois and Mum Eunice did for uh, we Timothy. They shared God's words with him. As a young child, they told him the old stories of faith. They taught him God's laws. They helped him to memorize the promises and to pray the Psalms. Friends, don't ever dismiss the power of sharing God's word with a child. And don't overlook your own opportunities to do so. As the Apostle Paul goes on to say in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, All scripture is breathed out by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction and for training in righteousness. Lois and Eunice prove that one of the best ways to pass on faith to the next generation is to share the Bible with them. Their third tip for passing on faith is to remember the power of significant role models. Uh, Timothy was urged to continue in the faith that he had learned, knowing from whom he'd learned it. Lois and Eunice, his grandma and his mum. Now these words, they really hit home for me. Uh, Four years ago now, it was my privilege to take my grandmother Vera's funeral after 93 years of a life well lived. Her story of life and faith is a great inspiration to me. It starts way back in the 1920s in Liverpool when my mother, um, when her mother, my great grandmother Ellen was stricken with grief, having lost my grand's then two year old brother Eric in a sudden childhood illness. One night, she dreamt Eric had sent her a birthday card which said, To my dear mother, with love from Eric, John 14, verse 1. Despite not then being a person of faith, my great-gran thought this might have something to do with the Bible. And so she fetched down an old family Bible uh, from the attic. But... She had no idea where to find the verse. So she simply opened the big old Bible onto the dining table. Imagine then her surprise to find that it opened at John chapter 14. With her heart now thumping, she read what it said. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. She thought she did believe in God. But who was the me speaking? A few days later, uh, a neighbour that my great grandfather described as a fanatic uh, knocked on the door to invite Ellen to a Christian outreach tent meeting in the city. Puzzled by her recent experience, my great grand went looking for answers. As she listened, she became aware that God was speaking to her, convicting her of sin and assuring her of complete forgiveness in Christ. So Jesus was the me the verse spoke about. She accepted Jesus as her Lord and Saviour that night. Heading home, she had no intention of sharing what had happened with her husband, Bert. Uh, He was a burly policeman with an often unpredictable uh, temperament. But as she came in, he asked her, where have you been? Before she knew it, she blurted out, I've been to the tent meeting and I've been converted. To which his response was apparently, about time too. A few days later, uh, while on night shift under a street light, He read the leaflet that she had given to him that night, entitled God's Way of Salvation. And at the end of that, he found himself praying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Vera, my own gran, also accepted this faith that she saw transform her family. She accepted that for herself 
And later she spent most of her life as an army scripture reader, a missionary to the British army, lead, alongside my uh, grandfather, leading many, many young men and women to faith in Jesus, including uh, a young man called Peter, the man who was later to become my own father. Continue in what you have learned and firmly believe, knowing from whom you learned it. The example of Lois and Eunice and those words to Timothy resonate with me. I give thanks to God for the wonderful women of faith in my own life, stretching now back across a century. Uh, my great grand Ellen, my grandmother Vera and my mum Libby, all significant role models in my own journey of faith. And I think for generations to come. Lois and Eunice, these great women of faith that we meet so briefly, but they have so much to teach us about passing on faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, look for the truth behind sincere faith. Look at the sacred writings as God speaks his words to us and look to the example of significant role models with God's help and the power of the Holy Spirit. Follow the example of Lois and Eunice and watch the kingdom of God spill over into new generations.
Again, thanks for joining us today. Let's bring our time together this morning to a close in prayer. Let's pray together. Lord, it feels like so much has changed in 2020, but you are still in charge. You are still God. You still love us, still hear us, still guide us. Lord, we ask that you give us strength to persevere, strengthen our faith also, protect us and give us peace. Lord, we pray for those amongst us who are grieving or anxious or lonely or weary or struggling to cope. Thank you for the ways you continue to bless us. More than ever now, we know we can't do this without you. Lord, be with us in the week ahead, in the conversations we have and the words we use and the decisions we make and the things we give our time and attention to. Help us to look out for each other where we can. Keep us looking up. In Jesus' name. Amen.